Welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to step into some object-oriented programming with classes. Object-oriented programming, or OOP, is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, and those objects can contain data and methods. So far we've only worked inside one class, but you can see that the class has had variables, or data, and methods like main and other things we've run from main. Also, if you'll think back to our list, if you have a list int list equals new int, list is also a class, and here you're creating an object ints of the class list. So we're familiar with the idea of objects, but so far we've kept all of our code in this single class, so we've done more of what is called procedural programming, which is just defining the steps that we want to execute without organizing them into objects. So let's start there. Say we want to create an application that lets users sign up, and we want to keep a database of this user data. So here I've written some code to do an example of this in a procedural way like we've done before. So feel free to pause and copy this down if you would like, but just know that a lot of this is about to get deleted. So what this does is we've created three lists to hold first names, last names, and ages. We have an infinite loop that gets the input first name, if the input first name is done, we're going to be finished. We're going to break out of our loop. If not, we're going to get a last name from the user. We're going to get an age from the user. We're going to add all of these values to our lists, clear the console, and do it again. Then once we get a done for first name, we're going to break out of our loop. And this is where we would do our database logic, in which we would have to iterate over one of the collections counts and write each collection at that i to the database. So first of all, while this would work for this example because we're getting all of the user input at the same time, it's a very bad idea to index other collections off of a different collections count. Because what if we went and made one of these fields optional? Now this whole thing would explode because these would be different lengths and the minute you try to get the index at the length that it didn't have, your program would blow up. If we had to do it this way, we would need to do a lot of validation to make sure that we could index it this way, that the counts were the same, that we had filler data, and with every field that becomes more and more and more convoluted. Also, somewhere in this application, chances are we have to get this data back out of the database. So to do that, we would have to create all of these collections again. We would have to do all of this validation and checking for filler logic again. And then we would have to iterate over all of these separately again. So imagine adding only one more field, having to change all of that everywhere. How complicated and potentially program breaking that could be. Not to mention time consuming. So that brings us to the much better way to do this, which is using classes to implement object oriented programming. So I just realized I stuck a null here at some point because I was trying something out. So let me put last name input back in here. Now let's see what this does before we change our code up. So we can use our breakpoints that we just learned about. We can run this. We can put a few names in, a few ages. And now we can push done for our first name. And let's inspect our collection. So we've got three first names. We've got three last names. And we've got three ages. So ages count would be three. So we would be adding all three of these to the database. So it works. But let's make it better. So we said at the beginning OOP is based on the concept of objects, which contain data and methods. So in this case, our object would be a person. A person has a first name, a person has a last name, and a person has an age. So we're going to create a class called person. So go up to your Solution Explorer, go above your project, right-click your project, go to Add, and then go to New Item. In New Item, class is the default, but if it's not for some reason, you can type class in here, and you want a C-sharp class. Now let's name this class Person, and push Add. Now you'll see we have two tabs in our code editor because we have two files. Person is a file, program is a file. So if we look back over at person, you'll see 
It added all of these using statements or directives for us, but we don't need any of them. They say they're unnecessary. So let's go ahead and remove them so we don't have to look at them and save our new class. So we said a person has a first name, a last name, and an age. So let's give the person class what are called fields, string first name, string last name, and int age. Okay, so now a person has these items, but these variables here, we can't use them outside of this class. And that's for a whole nother video. But for now, all you need to do is put the word public before each of them and what i like to do as just a convention is if the field is public i capitalize the first letter so now person has three fields first name last name and age now let's use our class so let's hop back over to program and let's go down here where we have all of our inputs and just like we would make a list we're going to make a person so we'll say person, person equals new person, just like that. Now we can access those fields just like we would use the add method of a list, except it's more like a variable. So we can say person dot first name equals first name input. And we can copy this a couple of times. We can say the last name equals last name input and age equals age input. So what we've done here is we've created a person class that is generic enough to represent any person. Think of it like a blueprint for a house. It's got a first name, it's got a last name, it's got an age. It can represent anyone. Now back in program, what we've done here is we've said, okay, we want a new person. We've created an object of a person and that's going to represent a specific person in this case the person that just signed up so we're populating all of these fields with our specific data so now we have an object of person similar to our list syntax that we've seen before you could also say person person one equals new person go straight to the curly brackets don't forget an ending semicolon and then you can call the fields directly and then separate them by commas, just like you would instantiating a list. So this is also valid, and this is the way I prefer to do it, but I'm gonna leave it this way so you can see how these are accessed. Okay, so now you've seen this, I'm gonna go ahead and blow this away to keep it clean. So now we need to be able to store our people and access our people. So what we need is a list of person. So we could say list person people equals new list of person. And now we don't need any of these lists here. And down here, all we need to do is say people dot add person. And we don't need those add calls anymore. Now that we've stored our person, let's iterate over our people. So instead of this for loop, Let's change this to a for each and let's say person, person, and people. Now, when working with databases in C sharp, chances are at this point, you would just write person to the database and your database layer would handle everything else. Okay, let's do a quick recap. So we have a blueprint that we can create any person out of, and those people have names and an age. In our program, we're creating a list of type person class that we created. So this list can hold any person that we make. We take user input. Once we get it, we create a specific object representing the person that just signed up. We populate the fields of our person object with the data. We add the person to our people list. And down here for each person in our people list, we would add it to the database. While you can probably already tell how much simpler this is to write and to read, let's show how easy this is to upgrade. So say we wanted to add a person's favorite color. So let's just copy and paste a string here and just say enter your favorite color. And now let's get color 
input. So we're getting the input. We would have had to do that otherwise. But now instead of creating a new list, adding the thing to the new list, iterating over the new list, all we need to do is go to person, add a new field. So we'll say public string favorite color. Now let's go back to our program, go back to where we're accessing them, and we'll say person dot favorite color equals color input. And that is all we have to do to add a new field to this. And then our database logic would be updated on that side to handle the new field as well. But here everything stays nice, simple, and clean. So now let's suppose after we write the person to the database, we want to show a success message with the person's full name saying we wrote blah 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 to the database. So we could do this. We could say string full name equals the person we're iterating over dot their first name field. And then we could use our concatenation operator to do the same thing with the last name field. And that would work just fine. But we could put all of this logic where it belongs, and that would be in the person class itself. So we could come into person, and we could say public string get full name, and we could create a method inside the person class. And from that method, we could return the logic to concatenate the first and last names of these two fields here. Now all we have to do is go back to the program class and full name would be equals to the person object dot the get full name method, which would access the fields for us. So now let's fire this up with our debugger and see what we get. Let's put a breakpoint here at the end of our first for each iteration and run this. And we'll add a name and a last name age and a color and a name and a last name and an age and a color and a name and a last name and an age and a color and now let's say done so now let's see what we see so we can look at our collection people here what we're going to get is three people and every item in our list is going to be a person which is this is our namespace dot person class. So if we open this, we can see all of our wonderful properties. So we have three people and we can inspect each one like this. And now for the specific person we're on, you can see it's also a person. So this is the one we are on right now in our for each loop. So you can see that the full name is set here. And now if we step over, and back over and back over and back over we are on a new person now and now if we step over this we get a new full name now if we go back to this method call here and step in we're going to jump all the way into our person class and we can see this happen in real time and if we wanted to leave the method we could step out and it will step us back to the end of here, at which point our loop should be done and our execution is finished. So next up we're going to talk about access modifiers and how they affect our classes and objects. So thank you for watching everybody. I know this was kind of long, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And as always, until next time, take care.